hello 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 because i'm intent on uh, chasing the views and the subs on youtube i thought i'd review more stump this time it's a fierce bagara bagara it's a fierce pancake so it is um released 7th of march 1988 this is the second and final album from stump and when you hear it, you can understand why. Um, again, we did um, Quirk Out previously, which is kind of a mini EP, mini album, which showed the band off. And yeah, we got this one. And this day was signed they had, because they had some kind of success. Did they have some, did they, did, again, I look, you're looking at, you know, charts, you know, you know, chart, do you, know do you, chart, do you remember the charts? How do you measure success? But reading Wikipedia pages and articles about the band, they had some success, though it was, it was enough for Ensign Records, which was a subsidiary of Chrysalis Records, to sign for for an album deal. And so we get we get this, um, and you go, my goodness, <laughs> when you hear it, you go, ah, okay. Now, either, you know, it was ahead of its time or it was just a completely misjudged signing by Ensign because it's more of the same. More of the same uh, from Quirk Out. Well, now, but whereas Quirk Out had, um, uh, it had a more home homespun feel to it, you know, the, in terms of the production, because, again, it was self-financed, you know, self not self-produced, but self-created, self-produced. There's production and there's production, isn't there? There's music production and there's actual production of the item. Um, I'm getting off topic. Um, I like that one because it had a kind of homespun feel to it. Now this one, it feels very differently because you've got that 80s, 80s production. And it has a certain dryness, hollowness uh, to the brand. Very clear, very clear production, but it's, it sounds... It sounds, sounds more obviously more professional, obviously, but it's more of the same, and yeah, it's uh, forty two minutes fifteen, but it's a long forty minute two minutes fifteen. Um, it has the hit Charlton Heston, which again, the uh, the lyrics I think the lyrics were written by Mick Lynch I think. Uh, sorry, Mike Lynch, the, the uh, well, this is all songs written by Stump. Maybe he didn't write the lyrics. I don't know. I know nothing. That's why you come here. Uh, again, with Charlton Heston, um, the lyrics throughout the album have this wordplay, this quirky wordplay, which you kind of get into, again, if you're not familiar. There's a, it's, it's, they're very literate as well. There's, there's, some very, there's, there's a lot of references and deep, deep stuff. So if you're one of these word hound type people that like you know, to do their, you know, to pour over lyrics, this is the one for you and the, the meaning. But to the casual listener, to somebody who isn't on the stump train, it's going to it's gonna leave you confounded and confused and flummoxed somewhat. Accessible, it ain't. And again, musically, it's um, it's very much from the, um, uh, the cardiacs, Virgin on Primus, there's, again, there's stuff in here that just reminds me of Primus. Primus sucks, remember. So, and there's a lot of that. So there's a lot of this, you know, discordant rhythmic. I mean, the rhythmic stuff, I don't mind. But what I found musically is the bits that I liked. Because, like, again, it's very it's very um, schizophrenic, you know, jump, jumpy, jumps around. Um, the musical bits that I thought were really good, there's like, I don't know, 15 seconds of them. And then there's like, I don't know, 45 seconds of stuff I don't think isn't so good and you get 15 seconds of good stuff again and so you know to my ear the stuff I like I didn't get enough of and the stuff I didn't like I got too much of you know um, so yeah it's a bit of an exhausting it's a bit of an exhausting listen um, so yeah if you like that kind of you know Zapparesque primacy um, cardiacs kind of thing you're going to be well at home. It is, it is an exhausting album to listen to. Um, you know, 
exhausting. And I don't think it's as fun. I don't think it's as fun as Quirk Out. Um, it feels like homework. It feels like you know, you've got to work. <laughs> and it's a shame. It's a shame. It really is a shame. <laughs> but when you hear it, you go, yeah, I can see why the band were caught of a million in debt after this because it was a, a very strange gamble. Again, this came out in, uh, when was it? Uh 1988 and the musical landscape at that point was very again I don't think there was on a on a major label I don't think there was much of much elbow room for experimental music I mean yeah on an indie label this would have been well at home you know I think again it was a bit of a misfire misfire and again it's not to say it's a bad album <laughs> you know these people can play there's some interesting stuff on it but as a you know, as an experimental album, it's like this should have been done, you know, for a fiver in the studios around the back, you know, sort of thing, rather than you know, um, you know, spending lots of money on it. And again, I think the production of it does kind of remove some of the soul. You know, it feels a little bit, you know, a little bit hollow. Um, but you know that's just my that's just my spin on it. Again, I've got a thing about his albums and the production. I always find them a little bit, a little bit brittle, um, in their uh, in their presentation and not as rounded as they could be. Again, I think it's again I think it's because I was mastering and mixing towards a CD rather rather than vinyl, so um, everything has the air sucked out of it. But yeah, it is more of the same. Um, you don't have the the fun tracks like Buffalo on here. You get Charlton Heston, that's okay. Um, but yeah, it's it, again to the uninitiated. It could be a, it could be a bit of a difficult listen. It could be a bit of a heart, and it could put you off. And it's a shame because they're a talented band, and I think some of the, again some of the, the wordplay and the lyrics are fantastic. It's just. You know, it just feels feels like hard work. You know, feels like hard work. That's just to me, though. That's just to me. Um, you've got to be in the right right frame of mind for it. <laughs> There's not a lot of variety in it, but, but they, again, they're saying that that's, that is that contradict. I'm going to contradict myself because in some songs there is variety because it goes from one bit to another, but. Like I say, it's so schizophrenic and it's like, oh, wow. Um, and I find it, you know, verging into that irritating, the cardiac area where, where it gets irritating and a lot of my goodwill you know, dissipates from it. And that's a shame. It is a shame. I think they, I think them being signed to a major label ruined them. They should have, like I said, stayed doing the independent thing and had a bit more fun with it, you know. This if again it feels it feels quite you know quite serious. You know, this is again at the end, towards the end on the second from last track, there's a a nice instrumental instrumental piece. And again, you get the feeling that there is an instrumental band in here trying to get out and that the words just get in the way and that you know. Um but anyway, should we have a, should we do some show and tell? Darren, show and tell. There we go. I, I, I really like the cover as well. I think the cover's really good. And it's this, this matte, kind of matte card stock, so it's kind of rough and ready. And we have an inner bag as well with all, all the words, so you can read them. That's, that's a great part of that picture. And uh, yeah, if you want to get your magnifying glasses out, you can read all the words. Look, see, there they are. Sean Heston put his vest on. Uh, Made number 74 in the chart. I think, was, was it 74? I can't remember. Yeah, it's uh, 72 in the UK singles chart. It's funny because I remember it seeing the video. I don't know if it was on the tube or the chart show or whatnot. And I, came my, uh, I watched it with, with my nan. And my nan thought they were great. She, was, she, she used to sing Charlton Eston put his vest on it, tickled her greatly. You know, so I should have written more songs for my nan, I think. Gone after the gone after the nan market. Um but yeah. 
it's an odd one. <laughs> I like him. I still like him. I just think, you know, I think with the right producer and the right studio and the right time, they could have produced something a bit more um, varied. Uh, so yeah, that is their second and final album. If it's Pancake, remember we're going to make we're going to make Stump great again, and I don't think I've done it with this review. Really. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Oh, and Stephen Street does some of the uh, some of the work on it as well, some of the engineering, which is I thought was interesting. Um, because he worked with the Smiths and went on to work with all manner of people. Old old Stephen Street, you know, he's a big big name uh, with you know Blur and the Cranberries and that, and loads of people. Um, so yeah, uh, that's that's a piece of thing. But yeah, I'm, I don't know if it's probably it's probably on YouTube. Go and give it a listen. Um, yeah, and this album left them a quarter of a million pounds in debt for the record company. <laughs> So there you go, another fantastic, insightful, entertaining review from yours truly. Uh, yeah, do pop by again, uh, and we'll do we'll do something more. Um, like I said, I've been talking about Stump's second album from 1988, a fierce, a fierce pancake. And uh, yeah, it's uh, they're a curious, curious, curious band. Um, I think they're ahead of the game. Ahead of, I think they're ahead of their time. And uh, yeah. But anyway, thanks for watching. There's only one more thing I have to say by now. You know what that is, and that is, ta-da!